every object-oriented language that I've seen, sorry, there are some broken ones that actually break this. So I won't say every one. But all the good ones that you've used, use static inheritance for data, for data members. So in other words, again, when a method is referencing a data member, it will start looking first in the class in which that method is defined. Even if the current object happens to be a child class with a data member with that same name. Okay. So C++, Java, all use C Sharp and other things like that. They all use static inheritance for data. Okay, so now actually let's look at a slightly different question. Let's invoke, let's take, so every day we can, yeah. Sorry, like you said you look for the class that the method is defined, right? Right, so in this case when I call get XA, even though I'm invoking it for class B, uh -huh. I don't find it here, I find it here defined by the parent. So what about if it's an inheritance, like get my X? Yes, so if, it, if I call get my X, it'll find this one first. So it's whatever you call first. Right, well, it'll invoke whichever, it, so you, to invoke a method or access a data member, you always just start with the current class of the object. Yeah. And the class of the current mm -hmm. object, and then go up the hierarchy. <coughs> so we would find get my x before we get to this one. The question then is, if, if it's something, so obviously this x is then going to refer to this one. But if it's something where it's not defined in b, it's invoking a method that's defined in the parent, and that method accesses data. Does it start looking in the current class, or the class that defined that method? Right. And so, yeah, the, an what, the answer we want is the class that defined that method. For exactly the reasons you were talking about. One, when somebody wrote class A, they obviously meant for it to access that data member. Um, also, in terms of access, we wouldn't want the parent to bite the, the override or the parent to be able to access child data members. But also, think about it. This is a, this is a way of breaking sort of uh, encapsulation. So you define a data member. You define a method that works with that, that data member. All I have to do to trick that method is to find my own function, my own, my own child class, define a data member with the very same name so it shadows the parent, and now your method uses my data instead of your data. Right? And that's just a huge hole. So that's why every sane object-oriented language uses static data inher or static inheritance for data members. All right, let's look though, we only have a few more minutes, so we'll wrap up with this point. Let's look at though, what if I do methods? All right, so yeah, so now we're gonna do something similar, except instead of a method accessing a data member, we're gonna have a method call another method. So when I call, oops, didn't scroll that far enough. So let's actually call, oh sorry, let's call get the x for data for this object of class B. So the member, it's, the object is class B. The method we're invoking is get the X. So we look here, ah, it's not here. So we look in the parent, it's here. Get the X now returns get my X. And clearly that get my X returns the 42 and this get my X returns the 99. But this call, get my x, <coughs> does it call this one, or does it call this one? So does it the, return the one that calls 99, or the one that calls, the, sorry, the one that returns 99, or the one that returns 42? Okay, yeah. So, sorry, we had some opinions, let's keep going, yeah. So I think that the when get the x is first defined, the the only function that it knows about is the one that's an A class. Ah, that's but the question is if that's overwritten when you create the B class. Yeah. Was that what you were saying? I was just going to ask, is this 
like so in C plus plus you have the virtual keyword, which yeah. seems to be it's declaring a function as using dynamic inheritance. And that's exactly the right way to interpret it. Okay. Okay. So was that what you were gonna say as well? Alright. So in this example, get my x, we'll call this one. Because you go in the parentheses. By default. C++ uses static inheritance of methods. Okay. Now, but think about it. To make polymorphism work, haven't you written functions where these methods will dynamically just simply dispatch and call the appropriate one for the child class? Right. So to make polymorphism work, you have to have dynamic method inheritance. Notice, still static data inheritance, but you have to, again, to make polymorphism work, you have to have dynamic method inheritance. So let me just wrap up with this point. So what C++, so notice again, you have to have the ability to do dynamic data inheritance. C++ by default does, sorry, dynamic method inheritance. C++ by default does static method inheritance. How do you get it to do dynamic? Virtual. That's what the virtual keyword is doing. It's changing it from static method inheritance to dynamic inheritance of that method. Okay. By the way, though, Java has no virtual keyword. Java, in its, in its keep it simple strategy, only gives you one option. So if you have to pick one between static or dynamic method inheritance, which one do you pick? Remember, to make polymorphism work, you have to have dynamic. So C++ gives it to you as an optional keyword. Java does it by default. Okay.